Today we're going to be showing you guys how to decontaminate a truck properly and tips and tricks of the trade that I've learned over the years detailing on things that you can do to make your life easier when you're washing a vehicle. From the bug gut etching to removing things using a clay bar or a clay towel in this circumstance. I'm going to be showing you things that save you time and money while maintaining your truck or maybe cleaning up a truck that you just got like Mike behind the camera. His link will be down below where you guys can check him out. He just picked up this truck and it's got some things that maybe um, he wants changed up like the stripe remove. We want, you want to do that, right? Yeah. Removing half the stripe. Of it's, half of it's peeling off anyways. Yeah. When we remove this stripe, things to think about, it's going to be a little bit different of a color, right? Because yeah. the sun hasn't affected as much. So we're going to have to blend that in with the polisher, which we're going to show you guys how to use. We're going to show you guys if you hear hear this up close. Sounds like sandpaper. Sounds like sandpaper. We don't want that. This is just a quick overview of what wheel and tire cleaner I use. Gonna be showing you guys a lot of tips and tricks, everything from odor removal because it smells like weed in this truck because Mike, smoking the Mary J in here, just could. Now he bought this truck and I guess it had the previous owner who smoked marijuana, um, is what it is, I guess. I guess it's 2021. It seems like everybody smokes marijuana nowadays, but um, it's not something that obviously Mike wants to have inside of his truck because when he gets pulled over He doesn't want a police officer. Nobody wants a police officer to be like hey There's probable cause to search your vehicle now because I smell marijuana some states. That's not probable cause anymore some states, you know, know your laws, but um, Where we are it still is so it's just something to think about So we're gonna use an ozone treatment machine that I got off Amazon and show you guys how that works I can smell when I shut your door. It hits yeah. me man. It's like I said there was some, uh, there was like little weed crumb particles in the center console that I vacuumed yeah. out. I said there was a little bit of that stuff in there. That's crazy, man. But I think that's what it still smells is because I think he smoked in it. And then yeah. I think there's probably stuff between the seats and whatnot. It might be. Might be. We're going to have to get that cleaned out and, and extracted. This. Show you guys exactly how I do this and what different products are for. So, the wheel and tires we always clean first. First, we're going to pressure wash them down by using my Greenworks pressure washer on my Real Craft reel. Then, we're going to be using my McGuire's detailing line wheel and tire cleaner. I also have PS brake booster in this little IK foam sprayer. That's where a lot of these questions are going to come from. So, I just want to hit kind of some of these things before that and also i just ran out of my pns brake cleaner so i'm not actually able to show you guys that gallon but it'll be linked down below it's another really good wheel and tire cleaner wheel brightener is just an acidic wheel cleaner that's all y'all need to know about that i got different ik foam sprayers this is dark fury one of my favorite products i actually have it's a superior brand dark fury bug remover this is if you guys have problems with bugs in the south like check out that front bumper while I stop this water You guys will be thanking me again If y'all check out this dark fury brand Dilute 10 to 1 don't let it sit on the paint for more than 60 seconds never wash while the trucks hot and don't wash in direct sunlight We got the three bucket method we use here in the shop of course, we've got the microfiber wash mitts to make sure we're not contaminating the paint. We've got grit guards underneath. We've got different tips for our pressure washer. We've got the wheel dollies or the bucket dollies. We've got our MTM gun, our MTM wand, our 40 degree white tip. We've got things from air reels, water reels, water hose reels. Those are all from Real Craft, best reels made in America, best reels on the market. It's not even close. The pressure washer reel comes in real handy. So this thing that pulls out, you gotta kinda get it to stop. Kinda pull it out a little bit, it stops on its own. Saves a lot of time. Let's talk about the soap we're gonna use. Since this one's really soiled, we're actually gonna be using a product I have in this container over here. It's called Car Pro Lift. It's a really good soap. We're gonna be using some of this in the wash bucket as well as the foam cannon. We've actually got some product already loaded in this foam cannon, but I'm not sure which one it is. So we're gonna be dumping this one out. These are MTM foam cannons, PF22 foam cannons. 
and they're very good. They run about 150 bucks, but they'll last you forever. And the surgical steel they're made with is just really quality. All right, so we've got our foam cannon mixed up with our CarPro lift. I'll tighten that up in a second. We got Mike going around with our initial pressure washing. We always start with the pressure washing first of the wheels and tires. And then we'll get the whole truck pressure wash. We got the wheel chocks down there. Helps with these power washing cords. When you're going around the truck, it doesn't get kinked up under the tires. We just foam it down. We'll let that eat for a minute. We've got an assortment of brushes in here so you guys can kind of see the difference one I use, and I don't know why this is in here. It shouldn't be in there. So we'll start with our tires. This is just a standard brush. A stiff bristle brush, we'll use this one for off-road tires. And we've also got a different brush in here for low profile tires, you know, kind of for smaller car tires or whatever. So we'll start off really cleaning the tire really good. Judging by how dirty this soap is, we're gonna have to clean this tire probably three times, which is normal, especially for Mike's dirty butt. He doesn't ever wash his truck. <laughs> I ain't washed it since I got it. You ain't washed it since you got it? Nah. I guess you're getting the I vacuumed wash. out the inside. I have That's another uh, blue brush in here, but I don't know where it is right now. Oh, here it is. So I've got two different styles of faces of wheels brush this one's a little stiffer this one's a little softer for like maybe painted black wheels that are gentle you need to be gentle with them for alloys like this they're a little harder of a wheel as long as we've got good lubrication with water and soap still on the wheel face then this one will be good uh, for the wheel face so start off with at 12 o'clock work my way around it's just a systematic way of doing things when you're in the business you always kind of need a systematic way so you can stay proficient and make money I was thinking about making a video series on how I started my detailing business and how I've made it to what it is today if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing let me know um, I guess there's a lot of courses on how to make a business nowadays, but I do feel like I did some things differently that may have projected my business a little sooner than maybe some. So it just, one of those things, if you guys want to know some information, let me know, but um, we have these different wheel woolies in here, just depending on the size of the wheel. Obviously we probably won't use this one because it's a little big. We use the kind of like the medium one. We've also got a very small one if we need to get into tight spots. We'll clean the insides of the barrels. You can see his calipers right there on this particular truck. It's kind of tight in there, so the wheel is just kind of smaller. Um, and the calipers and the rotors are huge. So it's kind of the, the worst of both worlds scenario when you want to clean wheels and make them good. Kind of get the smaller one in there to get a little bit further back. I kind of just want to clean up because a lot of times with this type of a wheel, if it stays dirty in there from uh, corrode, it'll get corroded from things like brake dust and everything else that's in the roads today. This is our lug nut cleaner. Obviously, this is simulated lug nuts, but actual lug nuts, this is a great brush for that. Where we can get into the nooks and crannies and the edges of the wheel around the valve stem and just really get in there good. Alrighty guys, now that we got an initial pre-rinse, you can pretty much do this before your pre-rinse. Honestly, I just forgot. Got tied up with them wheels and tires because they're dirty. But while Mike is cleaning up the rest of the two wheels and tires, I'm gonna be taking this 3M stripe off wheel with my Milwaukee drill and getting the stripe removed. I'm only gonna show you guys a little bit of a section because it's repetitive and it's the same exact thing. 
but take you a clean microfiber. Like I said, uh, we should have done this when it's dry. Start in this section on this door right here. But since we didn't, we'll start off with a little, uh, little wet here. I'll link this one down below, it's 3M stripe off wheel. Pretty inexpensive, and for stripes that are messing up on really any truck, it makes slight work of it. Biggest thing about a stripe off wheel, you don't wanna keep in one section for too long because then you're gonna heat up the clear coat and cause burn edge possibly. It's gonna take a lot to burn your clear, but still you wanna keep this thing moving. So for instance, if I'm working and this section and it doesn't remove it and I'm just like, crap, the stripe's still there. I'm not gonna work in this section for more than like three to five seconds. I'm gonna move and then I'm gonna come back when it gets a little cool. And you just do this to the whole truck. Typically when I do this on a truck, it'll take me probably 20 minutes to get the whole truck done. So a little bit of time, but we're gonna knock that out because Mike wants it removed. And then we're gonna proceed to washing the truck and then polishing this line in so you can't see it um, from being close up on the truck. So while I'm working on the stripe, Mike's working on the wheels, we're gonna go ahead and knock three things out at one time. We're gonna go ahead and get the odor removed out of the cab of the truck with the ozone machine. This thing's like 80 bucks on Amazon, works wonders, worth its weight in gold. Very simple to use. We're just gonna take our extension cord our, on our Wheelcraft reel. We're gonna pull it over to the truck. You guys can see here on the bed how it's left with a little bit of a mess when you're done removing the stripe. No big deal. Pressure washer, pressure wash it off. And we're gonna set this thing inside on top of the center console. We're gonna turn it to probably about 120 minutes, 120 minutes or so. Let it run, it's gonna spill its ozone. There's a science behind it, but pretty much how this works is it, it takes molecules out of the air and kills them and then exits with fresh air, with pure air. So I don't know how it works. All I know is that it works really good and very simple to use. And you can make good money out of this machine right here. Odor removals, houses, vehicles, smoke odors, anything. It's already on. It's pretty silent, but it's spewing ozone right now. Put it right there it, it, it smells like chlorine almost it smells like something like you're sniffing a pool chlorine uh filled pool so you can see it right there on the center console and just be easy when you shut this door just like that on the extension cord is fine and we're gonna get back to work We just got done with the initial 3M stripe off wheel, removing the stripe. Now, another secret I'm gonna share with y'all. This is the best adhesive remover probably on the market, Tar X from CarPro. What we can do is lightly kind of go over this lightly. You know, we don't wanna put scratches in his truck, but we don't wanna spray this directly on just a bunch of dust. What you can do to start loosening up that adhesive from that stripe off wheel. Spray it on like that. Gently, gently kind of massage this in. Ninety percent of it's already off. The rest will come off with the pressure washing and the wash process. And if it doesn't, then guess what? We got to polish it anyway to kind of get that line to blend in. 
it'll come off when we polish it. All right, so let's talk about bug gut removal and a way to prevent yourself from having bug gut etching in your clear coat. Because it can happen really quick, just a matter of weeks, really. Your clear coat can be penetrated with bug guts if you're not careful. There's acidic materials in bug guts. And this is Dark Fury diluted 10 to 1 in an IK foam pump sprayer. Kind of pump it up when you hear that sound. That's when you know it's fully pumped up all the way. Like I told you earlier, we don't want to let this sit on the paint more than 60 seconds. It is um, acidic. So we'll usually do half the grill, windshield, all at one time. So this is going to eat those bug guts away. I've tried a lot of bug gut removers out there. And nothing has been better than this thing, guys. So really don't waste y'all's time with anything other than this product. As long as you're not dumb, which a lot of you guys are my subscribers, so y'all aren't dumb. So y'all can easily use this. Just a little common sense and you'll be all right. So we'll get the windshield. And we'll get the tow meter. And boom, it'll be good. So I'll let that sit down. All right, so it's been about 60 seconds with our Dark Fury on there. Time to pressure wash. Check out right here, they'll probably get a good visual right there at the bottom piece of that bumper. These are bug guts that have been on there for a while, guys. Try to fresh wash these off. You can see it's eating, it's eating it away. Oh. So we've got about 90% of the Dark Fury off. That's good enough. We're about to foam can it in just like 10 seconds anyway. So we'll repeat the process to the other side exactly the same way and then jump into our foam cannon. All right, so we got the bug guts off. Real quick, you guys can see, without even touching them, we've got 90% of the bug guts removed, if not more. So now I'm gonna take my MTM wand off, bring a little bit of water out, let it chill for a second. Grab my MTM foam cannon that I just mixed up with my Car Pro Lift. Connect it using the Quick Connect. And now I'm gonna foam cannon down the truck. I'm gonna have to adjust this thing for a second and get my stream right, but it should create pretty good soap. Dude, watching it look like a paint job almost oh, yeah. in an instant. This uh, this soap is really good about removing stubborn dirt too. So right. That's why I chose this soap. I got a, a little less aggressive of a soap, but this one's really good for this application.
you guys can see that I didn't use much soap in here. I used like maybe an ounce, maybe. I didn't use a lot. And it doesn't take a lot. And we just did that whole truck. And look, we still got a ton left. So I usually start with the uh, hood, with the foam cannon. And then when I get done, I'll hit it again. Where most of our contaminants are going to be so we want to get that loosened up as best as possible so we don't introduce scratches onto the truck so we'll keep it rolling we'll disconnect the foam cannon reconnect our wand if it's a really dirty truck we would go ahead and rinse right now but since we've already got a good pre-rinse on it i don't think we need to do three rinses in total we'll just do about two and a half so now what we'll do, we'll wash top down. I know what some people will say, some people don't like these long, these long microfiber low pile wash mitts, but if you're very careful and clean them frequently, this is not gonna adhere scratches. But the side panels of the truck, I definitely use the regular wash mitts, but it's always wash high to, or high to low. And I'm just gonna show you a couple panels. We just go straight lines, back and forth. Straight lines the whole time. When I get done with the windscreen, I'll dip it into my rinse bucket. Okay. Hang on. So after I put it into my rinse bucket really good, put it back into my soap bucket, and I'll get the top of the hood with this long reach handle. All right, so that's how we clean the up high things on the truck. Now we want to, we don't want to wring this out. We want to keep this dripping. We just kind of want to pick it up. We want to go, by the way, I got to finish this uh, stripe right here. I forgot. I got to get that with my plastic razor blade in a minute, but I want to show you guys, this is how we clean regular panels side to side, side to side, up to down. Then we flip it over and get our next panel side to side. As long as we start at the top, work our way down, we've got a good pre-rinse, we've got a good lubricating soap. We go back in here, rinse our mid out twice. Rinse it out. Pick it back up, and then we're good to go for the whole truck. That's the wash process. One more little quick trick I wanna show you guys is using brushes around these emblems. So these are work stuff brushes. These are good. I've got a ton of these in different sizes for different applications. You know, I'll use this one maybe for the smaller one. But typically, as long as you got it foamed down really good, you can get in here these emblems really good with these work stuff brushes. They make other kind of brushes too. You don't have to get these, but. It's really good to clean off seals, inside emblems. Like for instance, as long as it's foamed down, you can run around your edges, get your door handles, door cups really good, get inside there, run your edges, run your seams on your doors. If dirt builds up in there over time, you can have issues with your seals going bad. But you guys get the point. I mean, you can run this thing every little crevice, especially you can go crazy here on the tailgate. You can go on the tailgate for days. I've always got a ton of emblems on the tailgate. The lighting's kind of bad back here. I need to bring my light stand back here, but you guys can kind of get the point. Just want to show you that really quick. We're almost to the decon stage. See you in a second. All right, guys, now that we got our wash stage over with, we'll go ahead and wrench the truck down and get all the soap off. Alrighty, so we've washed it, we've cleaned the wheels and tires, we did the ozone, we already took the ozone machine out by the way, we left it in there for about 30 minutes. We removed the stripe, and now we're on to our CarPro IronX LS, this is just lemon scent, it's a iron remover, and it is to decontaminate the paint before we clay bar, we're actually going to let this sit 5 minutes, and then start clay barring with our clay towel. 
We're gonna use the yellow ones up there. These are the blue ones, these are mild ones. We're gonna use the yellow one, which are a little bit of a medium grade up there hanging on the shelf. You guys have seen me use my pump sprayer, my foam pump sprayer before. Um, usually I do use that 99% of the time, but since we need a little more aggression, I'm gonna use the one liter bottles. These are a little more, less diluted. So for instance, we're just going to spray. You guys can see all of this overspray. It's really not gonna have that much effect on the overspray, but we need to get the overspray clean first. So this is how we do it before we start clay barring. So it smells like absolute butthole, but we get it on all the paint, we get it on the wheels, it's gonna eat all the iron off the wheels. We'll leave it on, like I said, for five minutes, and then we will catch up with you guys then once we start in the clay bar process we're actually going to use this almost as a clay lube we are going to use clay luber as well we'll show you that in a second on how exactly we do that Hopefully you guys can see it on camera, but this truck is bleeding purple. All the iron embedded into the paint. What do you think about that, Mike? Trip. <laughs> it is, isn't it? That's bare metal right there. Oh yeah. All that rust, it's eating away all that rust. This is really healthy for the truck. The truck can breathe again. It's gonna add a lot of gloss and clarity to the paint that may have been lost over the years. It's all over the truck. The tailgate's probably the worst. You want to grab one of those lights? Yeah. Show you guys the bedside. The bedside's pretty rough too. All bleeding all the whole truck. Get that back. Oh, you already got that? Alright. Show this back part. Check out this tailgate, guys. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's turning purple, Mike. That's insane, dude. It's so satisfying to see stuff like this. I mean, I could probably almost do this again like two times because of how, right. how much it is, but... But yeah, that's that's kind of the process, guys. This will be linked down below, guys. There's a couple other versions out there, but this has been the one I found to work the best. So check it out. All right, guys, it's been about four minutes or so. Give you guys a quick look at what we're looking like now. The whole truck is turning purple because of all the iron decontaminate or iron particles being decontaminated out of the paint, rail dust, brake dust, things on the highway that you get. That's what that is. Now, since we're Creeping up on our time, we've got our clay lube here. This is Chemical Guys Clay Luber. I don't use a lot of Chemical Guys products, but their clay lube is fine. We are being sure to wear a glove on our right hand, which is where we're going to be using clay towels. Mike's gonna help me here in a second once I show you guys how I'm gonna do this. So there'll be his right there. We'll start off on the section that we initially sprayed first. We'll lubricate really good our medium grade clay towel from Nano Skin. These things make quick work of this. And also to help lubricate the surface, we're gonna about 50% knock off the purpleness. So we'll miss it kind of. Just kind of get it kind of get it wet a little bit, just to add lubrication so it doesn't dry. We don't want this stuff to dry out. We'll get on our step stools, our Gorilla step stools, the aluminum step stools right here, Gorilla ladders. We'll use those to get up on top of the roof. Remember our wheels got hit up too, so we don't need to forget about those. We don't play with those, but we do power with them off. So now that I got this whole side done up, now I'm just gonna go. You hear that noise? Y'all hear that? It sounds like sandpaper, you don't want that. That's because of all of the bed liner. I don't know if that's going to come out. 
Uh, it's not gonna come out with this stuff, but this is gonna get a lot of it, a lot around it clean. So we, when we do start attacking that bed liner, it'll be clean. We're not gonna hear a bunch of scratches. So a normal panel, when you're done, should sound like that. Y'all hear that? It's kind of silent, but up here it sounds like straight sandpaper. You don't want that. So since we already know we're gonna have to go more aggressive on the parts that are bed linered, we're just gonna get a few solid passes with the nano skin towel. I mean, I can hear it, it is, it is doing a lot. We'll hit our glass too. It is clearing up a lot though. I can feel it, I can hear it. But that's how the product works guys, that's how it works. We got our glass on our mirror, perfectly safe to clay bar or clay towel and decontaminate. We're going to have Mike help me on the other side and we'll catch up with you guys in a few minutes when, once we get done with this. Alrighty guys, we just got done topping it with our Griot's Garage Ceramic Wax. It's not a true ceramic coating by any means, but it's like a sealant. It lasts about six to eight months. So we just got that on the truck. We are running a little short on time, but we got the tire shine on. We got the glass clean inside and out. We didn't really get to the interior today like I wanted to. That'll be another video. Let me know if you guys want to see like interior cleaning or polishing. We still got to polish in the line right here. You can kind of faintly see it, but for the most part, we got the stripe. I would say 97.5% off. So uh, I think it turned out pretty good. What do you think, Mike? Uh, it's a day and night difference. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm completely happy with how it looks right now because yeah. I never washed it when I got it. And then, uh, what do you call it? There was a bunch of road grime on it, dirt bugs and uh, yeah. just tar and everything. And the wash methods we used today just took everything out and really just revived the way this thing looks. It looks a lot better. Yeah, the iron decon and clay mitt really saved this truck and then a sealant on it for, to protect it after we cleaned it. And this truck's gonna look good for at least the next six months and then we'll probably have to do it again and maybe polish it next time to really get a nice shine. So if you guys wanna know anything about polishing or detailing, anything about detailing, let me know in the comments down below. I may start making some more videos like this. Thank you to Mike for letting us use his truck today for a detail video and decontamination. Hopefully you guys learned something. Smash the like button down below if you did check out Mike's channel down below. It'll be the top link down below where you guys can check out what he's got going on. And with all that said, Mater video soon. We're going to update you on Mater. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank. Breaking up the radio, playing old Hank, it ain't that long.